External, a placid scene in space. A gentle musical whistle plays over a placid view of outer space. Wisps of nebula and starlight hang ethereal on the fabric of the inky dark. Strings rise. The starship goldfish shoulder barges into view, coming straight at us, and with it, orchestral battle music. Flak explodes all around. Laser artillery fizzes by murderously. The cockpit's a maelstrom, and in the, dra- the dramatic battle music is somehow louder. Towards the back of the cockpit, Ghostworth mans co- controls feverishly. Flashes of red illuminate the cockpit with each explosion. Sam Sweet Milk's space adventurer grips the armrest of his cockpit chair, yelling loudly into a microphone symbol hanging by his face. Ship's log of Captain Sam Sweet Milk Saturday. Pretty normal day so far. Goldfish is charging at the distant broadside of a battleship. The red lights of oncoming lasers lunge at us, crackling. Start of the day with the Breakfast of Champions, which is, by definition, uh, whatever I have for breakfast. <laughs> Oh, Could you turn the music down, sir? It's distracting and I'm attempting to not die. Ah, yes, as well. Uh, we seem to be winning some sort of space battle. A laser blows the side of the ship open. Repairing. This is fun. Isn't this fun? It's not fun. Goldfish go- goes with presses a mute button and the music stops. Sam swivels in his chair. Appropriate music can make or break a battle, Ghostworth. And why are we in a battle, sir? Because they're firing at us. Because you... Well, because I... The bridge of the Ultimate Empire flagship, a crescent-shaped command room, manned by tall, moon-faced robots and helmed by an even larger moon-faced robot, is on high alert. Alarms flash. A white, egg-shaped ship can be seen through the window, lit up by dull laser fire. Someone heard our distress signal. Thanks, stars. On screen. A hollow panel appears, with Sam manipulating controls and singing the battle music to himself. He pushes up some sliders. They fired missiles! Press for impact! Because they're clearly evil. The black, spiny, red-lit battleship hangs in space. Just because they look it, ah! Ghostworth is caught off guard by the goldfish's engines roaring, launching them ahead. Goldfish is caught by two laser, sh- laser shots, one that imbalances them, one that sends them barreling off sideways. The ship rights itself. There's a the sound of Sam throwing up. Its sides are simply too well defended. We see the cockpit front on. A broad stroke of vomit is painted along the floor. Sam is leaning half off the side of his chair. Take it from behind! <laughs> We're the ones being taken from behind. We're completely outmatched. He creates a hollow panel. This is Ghostworth, first officer of... A hollow panel appears in front of the captain. The starship Goldfish. We're answering a distress call and this is all a misunderstanding. Fly up its arse! Sam, shut up! <laughs> ship, I'm the captain. Fly up its arse! That's... Ship, no! <laughs> we see the Goldfish's engines charge again, this time towards the flagship. They're flanking us, sir! Show me. The, we view the captain through the frame of a semi-opaque hollow panel where the flagship can be seen. A dotted line is racing towards its rear, his eyes open. Close the exhaust! The enormous rear hatch of the ship begins to la- slide lazily shut. Chance of collision, 34%. I like those odds. The ship races towards the rear hatch of the battleship. The hatch closes halfway. Chances of collision, 70%. I like those odds. The rear hatch of the ship is almost entirely closed. Uh, Chance of collision, 100%. I like those odds! The rear hatch is suddenly smashed inside out. The goldfish is still. The engines flicker and then blast powerfully. Robots dive for cover as the goldfish enters the rear hatch explosively. Like a dream! Bloody hell are you doing? Saving the day! Well, it looks a jolly awful lot like getting us killed. Ah, uh, it always does. We don't have internal scanners. Find them. We're side onto the ship, coursing through the ship's insides. It smashes through huge chunks of machinery. We've lost propulsion, weapon systems, the laboratory. Oh, no. Test tubes, beakers, and anonymous chemicals smear across the goldfish's windows. Oh, no! Front onto the ship, the front part of the goldfish shield charges. The ship tilts to- forward slightly, accelerating. Inside the bridge, the sirens. On the hollow panel, the ship makes its way up the flagship's throat, taking corners like a game of snake. It reaches the back of the cockpit. Match cut to the flagship hangs silent in space. The goldfish pops out of its face. Robots are flirting around in space among the debris through the front window. What do you know? No, my hiccups have stopped. There's a beeping. Transmission. Ah, that'll be the ship we... An enormous face appears on the screen behind Sam. Saved. You're scary. A living bathysphere suit, an armored dome skulled bird with tiny black eyes and a short beak like a, beak like a white goatee, entirely fails to be silhouetted against the darkness behind. The avianaut. It speaks like the voice like the bottom of the sea. You pilot a fine ship, Captain. Sweet milk, Sam Sweet milk of the starship Goldfish. You re, you are really scary. I have no name, though my enemies have dubbed me the avianaut. <laughs> Your enemies gave you a cool nickname? In my labors, I meet a great, a great many examples of technology, and yours is very fine indeed. Sam smiles. I hope my compliments console you in your final moments. What? Sam swivels. Ghostworth, what does he mean? Behind Sam, the image of the avionaut is replaced by an enormous armored egg, the shell. Its weapons charge, glowing brightly. Ah! Ghostworth taps hurriedly at his controls. The goldfish rears up like a horse, dodging a flood of green energy. It flees, exploding off into hyperspace. Who was that? 
That was, he was the reason there was a distress signal. Those people needed help. Oh, and I'm supposed to help everyone I meet. I'd settle for not kill them. All's well that ends well, hey ship? Negative. <laughs> Enemy in pursuit. <laughs> Nervous strings. We shift to the left, de-occluding the shell from behind the goldfish. Oh, come on! Drop some bombs! Weapon system damaged. Go faster, ship! Not possible. Shoot him? Weapon system damaged. Oh, for fuck's sake. He's charging up for another shot. All right, all right, shut up. Sam's face is shocked into a eureka expression. I've got it. Get ready, ship. Ghostworth tenses up and then hurriedly puts on his seatbelt. Ship, hit the brakes! The goldfish skids out of the side of the warp tunnel. Sam is thrown forwards with thro- strobing darkness and the sound of an enormous impact. Strobe to black. Fade in to the space station Sightlar bridge. From the dark, stars. A sender hand appears whose finger traces a line between three stars. The divine ellipsis. We see the face of Vela Sightlar, lit, gently lit by cold starlight. The background is a dim, dark blue. The king of ass. Cut back to the stars. She's made a butt out of some stars. He was a butt. <laughs> a single red star shines brightest. The loner, an independent star who don't need no constellation. She looks slightly downward. The spaceship hangs in space. Bored and alone. Vader, Sim, and Thorfinger squish stars one by one. She pouts as she p- pretends to speak for them in falsetto. No! Don't do it! We have lives! Her eyes close in mock misery. My moons. She squishes the red star. Her fingertip is lit up red. The- she flattens her hand- fingers out on the star and finds the red star is now the back of her hand. Vela looks behind her at the ship's console. We see a red light on the console at the far side of the room. Cut to close on the console. Above the light, the words distress, distress signal are lit up red. Distress signal? We're getting a distress signal! A light throbs above her. The space station itself replies, Yes. Why didn't you tell me? I did. I made a little light. Look. Whoa! Whoa! What do I do? She hops from foot to foot. We can't have guests, Vela. Fuck that! Someone needs help! I'm programmed to assist only yourself or friendly known vessels. Oh, come on! Vela brings up her address book, muttering, and points. Look, there's no friendly vessels in our contacts. True. Okay, okay, check if the ship is in our contact files. But there's nobody in our contact files. Do it! (sighs) Scanning. Ship is unknown. What's it called? Ship is ID'd as the Starfish Goldfish. Vela brings up a screen and begins tapping at an exotic vessel of unknown origin, which... Vela taps a final key. Ships and en- she's entered Starship Goldfish into her contacts list under an S. The little box says contact accepted. Okay, now rescan their ID. Just humor me. <sighs> Scanning. Ship is what? The light of the space station's voice turns off, then bright red, and alarm begins to sound. ID recognized. Is that so? Friendly vessel in distress. Sending rescue probe. A portal opens oh, no. inside of the station, and a little sphere tumbles out into space. Rockets fire from it, and it flits off. Fade to the wrecked goldfish hanging tattered in space. In the cockpit, we see Sam's face. He has a nosebleed. The ship judders and his eyes slowly open. Cut to a view of the ceiling. Cracks in it spark intermittently. I'm sick of waking up like this. Ghostworth's face comes into view. He's shining a light from his shoulder into each of Sam's eyes. Sam groans. There's a clang, followed by the sound of rockets. Sam and Ghostworth ship to the side and some debris roll across the floor. Ghostworth attends to a control panel. We're moving. I thought I totaled the ship. You did. Seems we're being towed. Toad? By an anonymous probe. And we can't... We can do. Magical. Sam stands and walks off to the back of the ship. Wake me up when we're being crushed by scrap merchants. I'm gonna go sleep off this concussion. Space Station Sight Lab Bridge. Through the window, the ship can be seen approaching. Vela stands by the window, fidgeting. She leaves, her footsteps getting quieter. Her footsteps return, and she touches the part of the world marked Emergency. An enormous, crackling, glowing gun... To call it a gun would be to call a battleship a boat... ...emerges, and she takes it. The goldfish approaches the station. We see an outer wall with an aperture portal. The probe gets closer, closer, rockets firing until it's crushed like an orange between the two ships. Vela's on the other side of the portal. A screen shows the inside of the goldfish in hues of red. She presses an intercom button. Attention, dis- oh shit. (laughs) Attention, distressed vessel? I've engaged the dock protocols. If you have attack- Sam goes with Sam on the other side of the wall. Sam's holding his pistol. Armaments, please, uh, deactivate. What? Uh, just put your guns away. I don't have any guns. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. On the red screen, X-rayed Skeleton Sam is holding a gun behind his back. Yeah, you do. Skeleton Sam tucks it into the back of his trousers and holds his hands up. No, I don't. Okay, well, I'm armed. No funny business. The portal opens. Sam whips his gun out. Ha ha! Sam draws his gun just as Vela rounds the corner. His quick draw motion becomes him holding both hands up. She's wielding her enormous cannon. Sam tosses his pistol to the floor. Hi! Hello! Hi. They look at each other. How are you? Fine, thanks. There's a pregnant pause. Eventually, Ghostworth speaks. 
Do you have a repair facility on this station? Sure. Sure. It'll take my space station a few hours, though. Are you hungry? What? Sam and Ghostworth sit in front of two plates of food in the dining room. Ghostworth doesn't bother pretending to eat. Sam picks at it, his fork tapping on his plate. He glances up intermittently. Vela is beaming at him. On the table, her cannon still crackles, pointing at him. He goes to eat, but stops. So? It's good, thanks. No, what happened to your ship? The adventurer, I suppose. Your adventurers? The gun bounces. Sam shrieks. Can you point that somewhere else? What? Oh. oh. <laughs> Sam laughs the weakest laugh. Sorry. She brushes it briskly off the table. It clatters to the floor. Sam flinches, arms and legs drawn up to his body. I don't usually have guests. Shocking. So, adventurers. Tell me about him. Ah, ah. All right. What do you want to know my, about my darling, my daring feats, do you? Baylor nods. Jesus. <laughs> the dangerous deeds of my daring do. Yes. Like, okay, what planet are you from? Sam's smile falters. He straightens up and gets back to eating. Oh, you know. What? Just a bit personal. What? Why? Sam eats silently. Vela, after a moment, goes back to cutting her food. He doesn't know. You didn't have to tell her that. You don't know? It's just... There's a pause. He deleted all his memories. Sam drugs his cutlery. What? When? A year ago. Why? He doesn't know. I don't know! He gets up, <laughs> scraping his chair, and leaves. Sorry! It's alright. He needs to accept it. So he deleted his memories? Yeah. The Starship Goldfish. There's darkness. The darkness is lifted and we're sitting on Sam's bed in his room. Sam looks confused. There's tear streaks on his face. He wipes his eyes, is surprised to find wetness, and then looks at the helmet in his hands. Sam looks suspiciously <laughs> at, well, everything. He emerges apprehensively from the room. Hello? The cockpit is resp resplendent in bright lights and flickering screens. I'm dreaming. He reasons with himself, pacing. I'm going to go to sleep and wake up, and that's a robot. Ghostworth stands in the corner of the cockpit, offline. <laughs> <laughs> we see Ghostworth in profile. Sam enters from the left, edging closer. He pokes Ghostworth in the face. Ghostworth speaks in a tinny, faraway voice without turning on. Improper access method. We look to Sam, who's recoiled, like, standing on one foot. He relaxes and edges closer. He pokes Ghostworth again. Improper access method. Sam recoils, his hand drawn back near his face. He looks at his hand, at Ghostworth, back to his hand, makes a fist, and then looks at Ghostworth. Space station site, like dining room. Ghostworth rubs his cheek absentmindedly. That's a hell of a first memory. Mm. And you turned on with punching. Please don't phrase it like that. <laughs> no, I just wanted him to stop hitting me. PA system beeps. Losers detected. Ceiling dining room. Purging life support. What's he doing in the control room? But seriously though, we're under attack. A rumbling explosion shakes the space station. What? Sam stands staring at the main screen. The shell hovers outside it. Avionaut's face replaces it, towering over Sam. I'm not used to being led on a chase, sweet milk. Shot of Sam, high angle and far away for effect. I have a fear erection. That's how scary you are. Your acceleration drive. How does it work? Ghostworth and Vela enter the room. I push buttons. <laughs> how does it work? No, really, I just push buttons and hope for the best. Is that true? Yes, it's awful. <laughs> Very well. The shell appears on the front screen. Weapons smoothly unfold from its sides. The guns burst into electrical spasms, cue music, and send Ghostworth to the control desks. Vela, what's your ship's name? Huh? Its name? What's its name? The guns glow brighter and brighter. It doesn't have one. I never needed to introduce it to anyone before. Ghostworth turns. The music cuts. That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Tragic. On the screen, a second set of the shell's weapons unfold and burst into life in a one-two punch. Yeah, space station. Yes. Full front shield, siphon the power of, uh, from the goldfish, seal off the side ports and primal rear-facing escape pods. The guns of the shell have turned off. They clack back into its body, which then turns and saunters away. The three gaze up at the entity screen. The shell moves off and disappears off into the distance. The three watch through the window. They look at one another. Ghostworth reads some instruments. What in the crap was that about? He's retreating. Sam claps once. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Vela walks up to the main window. Behind her, Sam dances, making karate chop poses. You cannot defeat Sam Sweet Milk because his penis is too big. Guys! They look up. Close up of Vela. Truck back gently to reveal Sam and Ghostworth behind her over her shoulder. Where are all the stars? Here he turns. Through the full window we see a vast rectangle of missing stars. Double musical stab. Rows of red lights appear. The fleet of the automatic Empire ships, including one center with its face all mashed up, line up in tight formation. Hundreds of ships, their front 
red front windows reflect starlight and like unreadable faces. In the exposed cockpit of the flagship, the automatic Empire captain points ahead and yells silently. Missiles thunder out from between their closed ranks. White dots appear in the dark. Missiles detected. Impact in 25 seconds. What? Shit. Panic. Panicking. Time to go. He runs by Ghostworth pulling his shoulder. Ghostworth doesn't follow. We can't. The ship can't. Sam looks between the door, goes within the missiles, wide-eyed, his mind racing. <sighs> he nods. Returning to stand beside Ghostworth, he faces the window. So this is how it happens. Sorry for getting you killed, Vela. What? Fifteen seconds. The, sta- the PlayStation counts down. Vela looks around frantically, a trapped animal. Sam gold- holds Ghostworth's hand. Ten seconds. Vela looks to the escape pod, the window, then at Sam's hip. She grabs Sam's pistol, hits the escape pod release button, and boots it into space. The air rushes out from the control room. She hangs onto the release and is dragged sideways out into the void. She files the pistol directly into the missiles, detonating three of them. Her face is fiery. She lets out a primal scream as the missiles thunder into the space station and past it. A longer shot shows the missiles darting into the far dark behind the space station and curving off into distant space. Vela is left hanging out of her home by one hand. After a short moment, she climbs back in. The portal shuts and she coughs. Sam and Ghostworth stand looking at her. You all right? There's frost on my eyeballs. We're alive! We're alive! What in the crap was that about? Sam punches the air. Woo! Ugh! My heart! Near-death experiences are just so... so fun after the fifth or ninth time. During this, Vela has been contact the fleet. You! With the missiles! Identify yourselves! Another erection! <laughs> what?! Vela, could you maybe calm down? Vela turns to Ghostworth. Meanwhile, on the screen behind her, a long-faced robot and a cape is side onto us. Ghostworth, my home is just the way I like it. Intact. I'm riled. She turns back around. Identify yourself. I am Secretor. He turns to face us, revealing his head is an enormous white crescent moon shape. Ah. Admiral to the fleet of the Automatic Empire. The gang take a moment to cope. Why'd you shoot at us? We didn't. We fired upon another. Who? The shell cockpit. The avionaut sitting at its controls notices a blinking white dot on his radar. Mm-hmm. The light is joined by hundreds of others. Huh. Hang on a second. Why only him? Sam, no. What exactly has he done that outdoes what I did? Vela looks to Ghostworth. What did he do? Ah, well... Montage. Dramatic music accompanies a quick smash-cut montage of Sam attacking and defeating the Automatic Empire ship earlier on. Vela is wide-eyed. Sam points at her. Exactly! I want that reaction from you, but... meaner. Meaner, Vela. He manipulates her face, pointing her eyebrows down. Look, grrr. We have repaired those you damaged in your attack, and we watched as the avionaut turned on you. Pardon me, but I didn't almost die four times this afternoon to come second to a bird in a spacesuit. Do you have any idea how daring I am? Ghostworth, tell him. You really don't know about the avionaut, do you? Sam considers and then replies with careful disinterest. What's to know? Internal, a great hall. Imagine the tallest hall you've ever been in and add 300 meters. This fucker has weather. We tilt down from its black immensities whose vertigo-inducing heights make your mind sing a silent note of horror and truck forwards past six fat, ornamental obsidian pillars to a door. It's a hundred feet high itself and mist curls out from it in wreaths. At his foot, the tiny forms of Sam Ghostworth and Vela appear. Their relatively cheery colour schemes cheery color schemes entirely juxtapose as they gaze up in wonder. Whoa. Indeed. Absolutely. Why is this door so tall, Sam? Seriously, who uses this? Welcome. They pivot to look behind them. Sam turns, fist raised. Segator is easily 15 feet tall. Holy fuck! Segator floats in a patch of collared spotlights, and tiny glowing LEDs float gently around him. Pardon? If I tripped you over, would you die? I doubt it. You are about to learn the history of the being we call Avionaut. Sam looks surprised at being the centre of... Ghostworth looks surprised at being centre of attention. He points to himself as if to say, Me? Follow me. Sekator moves past them. New spots of light appear under him like tiny glowing footsteps as he leans gracefully forward. Dare me to push. Shh! Sekator gestures towards the columns with both arms wide. Each of these items illustrates an event in our continuing struggle against the avionaut. We see from over Sekator's shoulder. First, our capital hub was destroyed. The exhibit is a piece of metal casing. For a long time, this bomb fragment was our only clue that we had an enemy at all. That is, until we received one of avionaut's recordings. The podium upwardly projects a small white hollow screen. Avionaut's face emerges from its static. He looks younger. Technology. Profanity. I am your end. Soon your obscene imitation of consciousness shall be pried loose of your metal bodies. Rejoice, abominations. 
I approach, and I am merciful silence. That's, that's enough. Erect your defenses. Segator ends the recording. Ghostworth? He looks away. As automatons, the idea that we are any less alive or true than another being is a painful thing to hear. Ignore me. Please continue. Maybe we should move on. He walks to the end of the room and then raises both his hands. A huge holographic grey sheet rises from the floor, covering the entire height and width of the enormous far wall of the Great Hall. What's that? A big grey thing. The thing is white. Look closer. Sam leans in. The grey hollow sheet is actually a white sheet covered in tiny black tally marks. Each knot represents a casualty in the war waged by the Abionaut. Vela puts a hand to her mouth. Ghostworth looks away. This is a mausoleum. What about the red ones? Sam gestures to the bottom right corner of the sheet. He walks over and pokes a clutch of red notches, casting a shadowy streak up the hologram. Organic casualties. In the past, we have commissioned hunters to pursue him. Bounty hunters. Sam pivots slowly, eyebrows raised. Something has caught his attention. Commissioned, you say, Sam? We manufacture miracles in order to procreate. (laughs) And this leads to a surplus which we sell on the open market to... So, money. Money happens. Yes. So, may may I speak to you for a moment? Ghostworth turns Sam around and leans in closer. Vela leans in too. They look at her and she flashes an uncertain smile. What do those hundreds of dead bounty hunters say to you, sir? What a shame that not everyone is as capable as me. Another face appears. A robot face. It's Matic, an automatic empire underling. Hello. Hello. We pan to the side, revealing an object. A matter unit behind Matic. A sort of microwave on a hovering trolley which flickers as it speaks. Hello. Sam peers around Matic. Hello. What? I'm delivering your matter unit to help you capture the avianaut. Capture the avianaut? Oh, did you not get to that part yet? So, so this was all a setup. You just wanted more bounty hunters. You spared our lives to send us on a suicide mission. Oh dear. What does it do? What do you do? I make things. Can you make toast? I can birth the heart of a star or conjure internal organs from a single DNA strand. Answer the question. Being manipulated, and it's clearly an impossible mission, Sam. Well, you can't spell impossible without possibil. That doesn't... I'll do it. I heroically volunteer to capture your avianaut. For money. I doubt that. But if you were to succeed, you would be rewarded. Sam claps his hands together and punches the air. Reward! Sam walks into the room ahead of Vela and goes with fists raid. Ordered! I'm so sorry about all of this. Sam puts his foot upon some of the more sensitive controls. Apologize for your own shortcomings, Ghostworth, for I have none. Ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! God, I'm already getting into this adventuring thing. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, you know? It's like freedom. The whole universe, you can go anywhere. That's right. Pretty, pretty rad. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you think I make a good adventurer? Oh, are you kidding? Vela's expression falters. You're gonna make a great adventurer, Vela. I'm gonna? You mean it? I mean it. The ship, the the external of the goldfish, it flies off from the space station sight line. Internal of the cockpit, Sam is sitting at his controlled cockpit chair. Goes with his soldering matter unit into the wall. Matter unit coughs out a piece of toast. That girl's really going places. Did it occur occur to you that she wants to go places with us, sir? (laughs) No, not once. She did. No, she didn't. Internal, Vader's cockpit. She stands by her window. We see the back of her head as she watches him leave. Yeah, she did. But we're going to dangerous places, Ghostworth. Places nobody would even think of going. Like... He scans the front screen and points. That way! It's okay, Vela. They're gonna turn around and come back and get you. She looks haunted. You hit three distant missiles with a handgun and survived a vacuum of space, so naturally... Everything's gonna... Oh, come on! Smash cut spread. Cool. Yeah, I, I fucked up at the beginning because I didn't get the tense.